Hello and welcome. Assassin's Creed is a franchise you have almost certainly heard about. It is a massive franchise that has been around for quite some time now. The thing is that if you are as long around as Assassin's Creed is, there are bound to be a bunch of hiccups along the way. In 2015 Assassin's Creed Syndicate was released and it was the last old school type Assassin's Creed game released for quite some time because Ubisoft decided to go into a brand new direction with the Assassin's Creed franchise. After Syndicate, Ubisoft decided that the series needed a reinvention from the perspective of the gameplay and the narrative. Or to put it in simple terms, this just meant that Ubisoft was going to copy the homework of CD Projekt Red. In 2015, The Witcher 3 was a major hit and Ubisoft wanted some of that sweet sweet quiche. So they completely overhauled the Assassin's Creed franchise which leads me to today's topic Assassin's Creed Origins now I have spent quite a lot of time on Assassin's Creed Origins but despite this I remember this game being pretty mid so I decided to jump back into Assassin's Creed Origins and see if it really is that mid Starting off with the story, for the most part it is pretty mid. There are some elements of the story that I think is pretty good. For the most part I think Bayek is a good character. I think he is pretty charismatic and I think his motivation for why he becomes an assassin is pretty interesting. Aya on the other hand feels like a waste of potential. She is also an assassin and she has the same motivation as Bayek, meaning she is basically just like Bayek. The reason I think this is a waste is because I think they could have done more with her character. She could have had a much different outlook than Bayek on their situation and the struggles of their relationship could have revolved around these characters disagreeing on how to deal with their problem but that's not the case. They are so similar that it makes their will they won't their relationship kind of stupid and is probably why I just wasn't invested in their relationship at all. So yeah I think Aya could have been a much better character than she ended up being. However when it comes to the rest of the characters they are all all pretty one dimensional and very forgettable. This game does have historical characters in it but you will most likely remember them due to the fact that they are historical figures and not because they are great characters. I do think that memorable characters have become one of Ubisoft's biggest weakness in the recent years and Assassin's Creed Origins definitely struggles in this department. I think the writing at times is not that great, it sometimes feels like the story just doesn't flow properly at times. This is especially true for the side quests. There is one side quest where you have to retrieve a book of the dead for an old man. Once you retrieve the book and return to the old man, he is dead. It comes out of nowhere and perfectly sums up how the writing just doesn't flow at times. Things happen for no reason, with no motivation or indication that they would happen, because the writers couldn't come up with anything, so things just happen. And again, it's not that bad in the main storyline, even though it does happen. Happen, but it is very apparent in the side quests. Also like most Assassin's Creed games there is a modern storyline that nobody cares about or is really invested in and Assassin's Creed Origins is no different. Overall the story is mid, it's not that great. Despite Bayek being cool and some great voice acting here and there, the writing is not that great, the story feels kind of generic most of the time, it has a bunch of forgettable characters and there is a lot of terrible voice acting in this game. Ancient Egypt is 
pretty cool. And this game takes full advantage of the coolness of its ancient Egyptian setting. The fact that you can find the Great Pyramids of Giza and the Lighthouse of Alexandria is super cool. These are ancient wonders of the world and the Lighthouse of Alexandria doesn't exist anymore. So the fact that they included it in the game is just damn awesome. The Egyptian environment is well done and very beautiful. Ubisoft can be criticized in a lot of areas, but the environments and visual presentation of their worlds are just amazing. And yes, the game's graphics is good as well. I never really focus much on the graphics because I believe the visual presentation is more valuable to the game's visual aspect. But when a game has some good graphics, it's like a cherry on top of a very nice and juicy cake. I think the only real improvements the environments could have is the NPCs. A lot of the same NPC can be spotted over and over again and they are pretty dull at times as most will just stand around and are just there to fill up the world. And yes, I will give credit as there are some NPCs that you can come across that are actually busy working or just doing something which is kind of neat. But I do think the NPCs could be much better. Making a game that has a desert setting look interesting is not that easy, but they nailed it. I think that this game is beautiful. They managed to capture the essence of ancient Egypt and it is one of those games where you will sometimes stop to just take in the view. The missions in this game are not that great. This game is highly inspired by The Witcher 3 and the missions in this game just doesn't come close to the standards of The Witcher 3. There are no branching quests, they are very poorly designed and most are just generic boring fetch quests. Same can be said about the side quests and the reason I mention the side quests is because you are required to do them. The RPG system is terrible in this game and fighting enemies two levels above you is a headache so you have to complete side quests to level up as the main quests do not give you enough xp i think it is terrible when games do this and this game has a reason for why it does it which i'll get into in just a minute but all of this adds up to make the game less enjoyable now for the biggest problem of this game the open world ubisoft's infamous open world design is at full display in this game. The points of interest are generic, repetitive and there aren't that many different types of points of interest. I do think it would be much better to explore the open world if Ubisoft removed the markers that mark all the points of interest, but the world still needs a greater variety of points of interest. I think the more interesting things you can come across is the Hippodrome and the Colosseum, as these things provide the player with a bunch of cool activities to do, but despite that the open world is is just boring and generic. Overall I think the missions and level design of this game is the weakest element of it. The open world is the worst offender and the terrible missions combined with the terrible side missions this game forces you to play sucks ass. Gameplay is another area where this game could have shined, but sadly it falls short. Let's start with the combat. A lot of people say that the combat feels floaty, and in some cases it does. There are some weapon types that feel floaty, they do not feel satisfying to use. Feeling the impact is important, and some of these weapons feel like you are slicing butter, instead of chopping wood. However, there are some weapon types that actually do feel good and satisfying to use. Staying on the topic of weapons, this game gives you a shit ton of them. The thing is that you can upgrade weapons in this game, so it is easy to just find the weapons you like and continue to use them throughout the game. These same weapon types with the same rarity all have the same DPS, which is very stupid, and the only difference of these weapons are the perks or abilities they have. This means most weapons you collect are just trash, you are going to 
sell and well most weapons sell for basically nothing. The enemies are another big problem. First off the enemy AI is not that great. In fights a lot of enemies will just stand around, they do not try to keep pressure on the player at all. Which was one of the coolest things of the enemies in the older Assassin's Creed games. Another thing is how the enemies are outside of combat. The enemies are brain dead, they are so easy to trick when it comes to stealth. They lose interest way too quick, some of them might be blind and small details like how in the older games the enemies would search the bushes by stabbing into them, which is now just completely removed. Enemies are also damage sponges. The regular enemies take way too many hits to kill, even with the stronger weapon types. Also, enemies have a very limited amount of attacks and, of course, the enemy variety is very poor. This means it gets very boring towards the end of the game, fighting the same enemies over and over again. The RPG mechanics really suck. The skill tree is a big issue. There are a whole bunch of skills in the skill tree that most games just give you from the get go. Turning these basic skills like the ability to parry or skip time into skills you have to acquire is stupid. Despite those, there aren't that many useful skills in the skill tree. Relating back to the combat, the combat starts to feel stale after a while. And this is because there are only a handful of new combat skills you can acquire over the course of the game. The stealth skills are also very disappointing, as this game is an Assassin's Creed game and yet it has very little and very basic skills it offers the player. Furthermore, because of the RPG mechanics, there are a whole bunch of enemies that can't be assassinated. If you try to assassinate these enemies, you will damage them, but they will throw you off and then engage in combat, making stealth in this game way less effective than in any of the other Assassin's Creed games. Now the biggest issue with the RPG system is the fact that it seems to be designed around this game's microtransactions. I mentioned I would get to why this game forces you to do side quests. Well, microtransactions is why. There are time savers you can purchase to avoid doing the side quests. The best weapons and coolest armors are all microtransactions. And well, this just doesn't fly with me. These are aggressive microtransactions and have no place in a single player game, especially when there are mechanics designed to encourage the player to buy them. Now there are some elements of the gameplay I do like. First off, the climbing in this game is much better than any of of the other Assassin's Creed games. Bayak is like a spider, but he is a man, almost like a Spider-Man. The movement of Bayak is very smooth and dynamic. In The Witcher 3, Geralt was kind of a pain to control, especially in more tighter areas, but Bayak doesn't have that issue at all. The same could be said for the horse controls, as in The Witcher 3, the horse controls only work, however in Assassin's Creed Origins, the horse controls very smoothly, even though it is way less realistic. So overall the combat could have been great, but is held back by terrible enemy AI, a terrible implemented RPG system and shitty microtransactions. Now I do think Assassin's Creed Origins has a bunch of issues. I do not hate this game, I actually think that this is the last Ubisoft game I played that I actually thought had a lot of potential and the building blocks were there to make a good game. I think the biggest issue I have with this game is the fact that it feels like a half measure. It feels like Ubisoft wanted to make a Witcher 3 ripoff but didn't want to stop making Assassin's Creed games. The thing is, I think they should have. They should have taken a break from the Assassin's Creed franchise and made a Witcher 3 ripoff instead of this half ask nonsense. Just imagine an ancient Egyptian game where you fight a bunch of ancient Egyptian mythological creatures. Features. That to me sounds way cooler than what Assassin's Creed Origins has to offer. So, do I think this game is mid? Well, yes, I do. But I think it had way more potential and could have been an actual great game. So, that is it for this video. 
guys thank you very much for watching bye bye